guy this morning. My throat is pretty, uh, I've been having quite a bit of trouble with it this week, but the Lord will take care of it. He always does. Uh, I know there's not very many here this morning, but there's really some good instructions here. But I believe that if, if God's people would just really turn to him and seek his face, I mean, really get dedicated to God again and make God the uh, center of their life instead of the things that we're involved in so much. All of us is busy, it seems like, in this day and time. I had a real busy week this last week. And if you don't watch when you get that way, you leave God out. You know, God gets neglected. And not that you turn away from him, but you just get busy and you don't pray and you don't meditate on him and do what he wants you to do. I've been trying to spend time with my son because he's recovering from that heart attack and I've been trying to help him and I guess I've kind of fell short this last week of, of uh, really praying and seeking the Lord but <clears throat> I feel like that I need to see him through this and be a support for him. God has laid a lot of things on my heart this morning <clears throat> about how we need to live. Our Sunday school was on the fruits that we bear, and the, that's really important, being out in the community around letting people see our Christian fruits. And the love is the greatest of all, but then there's other fruits that we need to bear, like patience, long-suffering, temperance, everything that there is that makes it work. We need to study on that and see what we need in our own life. In the, the old church services, we have a time of uh, just like solid prayer. And you would think about, almost take inventory of your life. See where you stood with God. And we need to do that every day in our life. I'm going to preach from the third chapter of Malachi, starting at the seventh verse. But not very many people here. But the ones that's here, this can work for good in your life. And I'm not saying any of you don't pay your tithe, tithes and offerings even to go above and beyond the tent and be generous in what you give. I know by experience that God returns it to you one way or the other. It says, even from the days of your father, uh, fathers, uh, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? I, boy, there's so much in that scripture this morning, that verse. People, I believe they don't even realize I'm talking about 
Christian people how close to God we should be. That God should be what we think of. He says for us not to even lay up treasures on earth and they said lay our treasures up in heaven. If we become hard workers for God, I'm talking about hard workers, not just workers that we kind of ease around things, I mean, be energetic, full of the Spirit of God, happy to meet and greet people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and you know, and it may seem like that that would be putting a load on you, but it's the way that we're supposed to be. If uh, you got an apple tree, there's supposed to be apples, whatever kind of uh, apple tree it is. Someone walks up to that tree and in the season when it's barren, they expect to find apples on it, not crab apples, <laughs> <laughs> but good, sweet apple that you enjoy taking a bite of. That's the kind of Christian that we need to be around in the community. We need to show people how joyful it is to be a Christian. I mean, do you think about that very much that we've got, I've got everything to make me happy. If I've got a home in heaven, even if I'm having a hard time here, I've got something that surpasses what's happening in the immediate time that's going to happen when I get to heaven. What a day that's going to be. Oh, if we could only get a vision, if we could only imagine let our imagination run away with us of what Jesus, the intention that he's got for us. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It don't make any difference uh, what's going on in the United States as far as God been in charge. He is still in charge. That's right. His word is going to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. There is going to be from this time to the end of time what is prophesied in the Bible that's going to happen. But if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is a promise for this day, the coronavirus. I, I still believe that we've got the power. I believe that we got the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be more than overcomers, that we can overcome this, and that we when we come out on the other side, it's going to be like the children of Israel crossing the river of Jordan, crossing the Red Sea. The enemy was drowned in the Red Sea. And when they crossed the river of Jordan, they entered into the promised land. We're on our way there right now, into the promised land. It is our duty to take as many as we can take with us. Praise the Lord. It's not easy for me to preach this morning because I've got this problem that, that no doubt God didn't put this here, but the devil, the, he, 
he uh, wants to think that he's going to whip us out this morning because there's a few number, few in number here. But we're victorious this morning. The ones that's here, all if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. We're a pretty strong army here this morning. We're in the army of God this morning. And I stand on the word of God. I know that it's real. I know what he promised us in his word that we can abide in that. We can live in it. I'm going to read the eighth verse that says, Will a man rob God? That is a good thought for us to think of. Now, I'm not just talking about money this morning. Will a man rob God? How much do we rob God of his time? I mean time that we could be using that is so valuable. I think a lot, Sister Jackie, about when we stand in the presence of Jesus. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, he'll look at us and he'll say, enter my good and faithful servant. You've been uh, faithful over a few. I'll make you ruler over many. Faithfulness in the Lord is what counts. How many robs God of the faithfulness that we're supposed to, we're supposed to be steadfast, Brother Bob. We're supposed to be steadfast, just as steadfast as we can be in Him. If you got a job, you have to do your very best on that job. And that, that's the way to get flavored on the job is by presenting yourself and doing the very best that you can do. I believe <clears throat> that it's the same way with being a Christian. Oh, you know, I may have expected too much of myself through life because when I felt like I was failing God, I'd quit church. I, I just wouldn't come. I was so let down in myself. But, uh, I mean, I, I believe that's the wrong way to look at it. The devil still tries to tell me, you're not worthy of anything. You're no good. But when I become a child of God, I become a child of the king. I mean, his royal blood flows through my veins. I, that is the truth this morning. Amen. I become an heir with him. I don't want to rob him this morning. I want to be a quality Christian. Someone that when he looks at me, he'll He'll open up his arms and he'll say, Enter, I've watched you and you've been faithful. I, I want to be faithful this morning. And it does make a difference to God how we present our body because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Christians, the Holy Spirit abides in our body and it Bible says he won't dwell in an unclean vessel. And I mean, we need to clean our vessel every day. And we do that by, by realizing the wrong that's there and praying and seeking God and getting rid of it. <clears throat> Will a man rob God? Yes. Yeah. Say yet, yes. ye have robbed me. I mean, that's short and direct to the point there. 
Now he's talking to Christian people here. He's not talking to sinners out there. They've never committed themselves to God to start with. Right. And that, the only way for them to even get included in this is to be born again. Jesus said you must be born again. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithe and offerings? And that is all I've preached that all, ever since I've been a Christian, been preaching tithe and offerings. I believe that that is a key to getting God to favor you. I know that he says he's not a respecter of persons, but yet there's going to be a day when we're going to be rewarded for things that we do. I mean, there's going to be awards in heaven that's going to be given out. There's five crowns in the Bible, the crown of life, the crown of joy, and I, I can't remember the others, but there's five crowns that the Bible says that will be awarded. And unless that we fit into the category of getting these crowns, we won't get one. I mean, uh, there's one place that it talks about everyone taking their crown and casting it at Jesus' feet. And, oh, I want to be in that crowd that day, that assembly, when they take off their crown. I hope I've got one. And then there used to be a uh, song, Will there be any stars in your crown? You know, stars that is talking about is the center people that we get to come to the Lord and get saved. That anymore, it's so few people that you hear of been saved. Will we rob God? How many ways are there of robbing God? How serious are we about, about our lost loved ones? I remember when people would get on their knees at, at prayer time before they went to bed most of the time and pray. I've heard the older Christians in my family get on their knees and pray for an hour or more before they went to bed, calling over names that they wanted to see saved over and over and over and over and you know what would happen eventually people would get saved Amen. and they'd come to the Lord <coughs> it says you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation I believe that the United States is guilty of that today. We're robbing God of being able to pour out blessings that he would pour out here in the United States if we would go back and realize there is a secret place for the most high that we can enter into and we can have fellowship with God. I mean a personal relationship with him. This is not just something that we talk about, but it, there is a personal relationship with God that we can have and that he will listen to us. Even our prayers are bottled up in heaven, Brother Bob. That means that he's got a there that he can listen to any time that he wants to listen to what we said. Like you can turn on a recorder and record what you say and then you can listen to it 
over and over. God has got our prayers bottled up in heaven. That should do something for us this morning to know that the God, the creator of this universe, of the world, the creator of you, he cares so much for you individually, for us individually, that he'll take time to bottle up prayers that you pray that he can listen to over and over. I mean, what a God that we really serve this morning. It says, uh, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse <clears throat> that there might be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. You know, I have thought when you bring your tithe and put them in the offering plate here, that works. It, it starts a chain reaction. You know, I can't remember one time of not having all the food I need in my house. Even too much food. I have too much food and I have to say I don't need any more to eat and walk away from it. If I didn't, I'd gain so much weight I, I wouldn't be able to get around. I have to limit what I eat and I have to thank God for what he gives me. Yeah. But I believe that if you take one step, he'll take two. I believe he's promised us that if we're obedient to him and to his word, that he will fulfill his word and that he will supply our every need. There's a lot of things for God. One of these days I'm going to get a list of them. It, it's in my Bible. And the, I, I'm going to read them all. He's Jehovah Jar. He is our provider. But I mean there's a whole list of who God really is. He told Moses, he said, I am the great I am. And I've got wrote down here 12 different uh, Places where it says, I am this. He said, I am the door. I am the light. I am the light. And he just goes on and on with who I am. He is the great I am. He is my redeemer. He is my healer. He is my provider. He is my Savior. He is my resurrection. Oh, what a God he is. And how I thank him for the words of life that he gives us in the Bible. They are words of life. Along with the Spirit, the Bible says, the Word killeth. But the Spirit bringeth life. That's where life is at. It's in the Spirit of God. If you want to be happy, ask Him to fill you forward with His Spirit. And oh, there will be a miracle that will take place there. You'll be sitting around, God will start blessing you, and there will be a smile come on your face. Right. He'll remind you of things that He done for you, like the one potato that made a heathen, a skillet of potatoes, the time when I sliced that one potato. That is a miracle. But that was the working of God. Without me even being conscious of what was going on, all of a sudden I looked at that 10-inch skillet 
it was round and up. I thought, where did all that come from? And I, I still had a piece of potato in my hand. God is a God of miracles. He healed Margaret's wrist when she fell over in the woods over close to the Julian Tower where it used to be. She broke her wrist I and mean, then laid back on her hand, arm. And we prayed for it and God healed that wrist instantly. She was splitting wood and she picked up the axe and went right back to splitting wood. And in the hospital, they done an MRI and they told her, said, you have had a terrible break in that wrist. And she forgot it, but I reminded her. And it confirmed that it was broke. The MRI showed where it had been broke at. God healed it instantly. He is a God that we can rob this morning if we don't watch what we're doing. Oh, or we can be a blessing to him, Brother Jim. I mean, we can be a blessing in the community that we live in. I, I've i got people up there that lives around me that are sinners. But the way I greet them, I don't look down on them. I greet them like they're fine people. And I let them know that I truly am glad when they come and visit me. And they, they're good people. You know what? They're people like I was before I got saved. They're not perfect and they need Jesus. Christ is their Savior. I believe one day they're going to turn to him. I passed Roger Will Hyde. He was out there working. He wasn't looking towards the road and I blew my horn. He turned around and waved real friendly. He's always real friendly. And I'm invite him to church and he'd say one of these days I'm going to surprise you and I'm going to be I'm going to be there I, I say I'm, I say Roger when you go come through that door I'm going to be a shouting <laughs> and I will I, I tell you not just Roger Mike Asher all of them that lives up through there and I'm waiting for the day that they become a Christian person, acquainted, saved by the blood of Jesus, and in the family of God, have an acquaintance with him like he means us to have, means for us to have. And then it says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. That's the promise of God. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time and the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And I'm going to close here. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. I mean, that's really a good promise. I'm going to close there this morning. I'd probably preach longer, but I'm having so much trouble with my voice. But I, I believe that I preach what God wanted me to preach this morning. And, oh, I thank him so much. I, I thank the Lord for this opportunity. And, uh, oh, uh, us just keep our faith up, our trust in the Lord, and everything is going to be all right. Amen. In the end, it's going to be all right. And he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, and I'll, I'll never fail you. And I believe we can believe that this morning. Amen. Amen. Okay, anybody get anything on your heart before we close? Let's stand and we'll be dismissed.